Namaste, bitches! You join me today as we launch a little love toward everybody's fourth favourite Decepticon. Because as of 2017, it's been ten actual years since this guy first flatulated his way under the tube with half a plan and half a beard. And as you may remember, but hopefully don't, the first toy I ever reviewed was Classics Astro Train. So what do you say we grab every single Astro Train figure in the building and make it train up in here? Yes, indeed, all aboard for the Astro Train return trip, calling it Generation Central Station, Third Party International, and Bewildered reissue parkway. Toot toot, mother f So to kick off, let's catch up with the G1 Astro Boy. Now, I don't know how deep I need to get into the actual toy, seeing as I tend to assume everybody already knows. I mean, this thing's been in my life since I was three, so I kind of don't understand how to think about it objectively. It's like trying to describe what chips taste like. You know, it's... You know. But I guess in a nutshell, it's pretty much a well-loved but not really very good little oblong of 1985 awkwardness. Bad arms, tiny head, massive gun, and just flaps, and it's, it's, it's all flaps. And a steam engine with a rocket butt. Anyway, here comes the train again, falling on my head like a memory, and a positively inscrutable new outfit. So this granola and yogurt repaint dropped semi-recently in a Platinum Edition 2-pack with an equally inappropriately attired Blitzwing, and I just have no idea. I kind of thought the point of the Platinum set was just to push out some cut and dry G1 reissues, all pristine and unaltered and nostalgic asmic. So why get weird with it just this one time? Who's this for? To be fair, Blitzwing's actually looking pretty crisp in his flywheels cosplay. Like these militaristic maroon fatigues actually look pretty hardcore. But Astro Train just looks all right plum in this faux neon G2 reject weirdness. Now apparently this is in fact a monstrously obtuse homage to the Japanese multi-force Minga Mac tackle. Obviously stupid. And I suppose on some level it's kind nifty. I mean, both the vehicle modes look horribly uneven and kinda stupid, but I can't be mad about it. Astro Train's never been able to stick to a colour scheme, the hussy. This one's purple, this one's white, this one looks like creamy shite. <laughs> now then, let's at long last take a much needed second peek at the incumbent chug Astro Train from Classics 06. Classics? God, those old reviews are a tough watch now. I mean, it's all indistinct mumbling and ear-splitting audio levels and God, look how thin I was. I need to jettison some weight. So it was always a bit of an anomaly, this one. Like, he's alright. Definitely not garbage, but it's just a bit of a dim bulb. I guess I see what they were going for. Like, classics were supposed to be like modern reimaginings rather than straight G1 fan service. Hence the linebacker pads and the horrifically intrusive Shinkansen sleeves. And I've never been crazy about the boring ass, plain Jane, white bread, milk toast, chicken shit outfit. But he looks astro trainy enough. Like, dig the deep V deceptive bow tie in the sexy inverted wings cape complete with awkward unpainted back booster, the superbly simplistic giant purple rifle, and that smooth dome bounce is sort of vaguely recognisable? Actually, is it? Is it at all? Or am I now so old that I'm getting nostalgia for something that's trading off my nostalgia for something even older? Anyway, he's certainly got some weird legs on the go. With these drastic sideways thigh swings, with a couple of frontways hinge bolts malleted through them, I guess they had to be heavy duty to cope with the pulley outy leg forming, but it all looks so hokey since the Combiner Wars chopper lads came along and did the same thing but smarter and cleaner and even stole his friggin' feeties. Still though, he does have a kind of endearingly unwieldy post-Energon vibe and you can high kick like an absolute rat bag. So there's been a few alternate away kit versions of the old classics Astro Train, Clastro Train, with each one exponentially ramping up the radness. Stick if you will, Henke Astro Train, the Japanese contender who makes our boy look a right plum in this scrumptious charcoal and chocolate screen scheme. There's just so much more to love here. Like, I don't know if it's the plastic or just the paint, but he feels almost glossy to the touch, and he just looks so sultry. Like, I always love me a purple helmet, and that spooky white face with bloodshot red eyes are just Pazuzu in this party up. And check that chromey shoulder booster and blinged out bow tie. Friggin' sploosh. Anyway, flash forward to this decade and yet another, yet flashier Astro clone in the form of Million Publishing Shoki. Shuki? Shucky? I think it's Shoki. Now then, this wondrous weeb is in fact an Autobot version based off one of the Japanese trainbot lads. He's certainly a sharp customer in this officious cobalt blue with luxurious gold piping and subtle diaclone vibes. And if it seems he's not bringing much new to the party, check the record. Daniel included! Thank God. Is that what this is? This thing? This nasty little rusty ass outmoded ass power core longbow minicon and a magneto hat? This is Daniel. As in Daniel. Well, alright, box. If you say so, box. So yeah, deep down, I guess this robot mode's actually pretty banging. It just shines that much brighter after a tiny bit of Takara pampering and or about seven years. <laughs> Try 
transformation still feels good, man. That head flip with the chunky back paddle gives me life. And the wings all snap and clap around like a bowl of Rice Krispies. Slightly wary of these precarious wing hinges. Winges. And the train mode kind of ruins it. Real talk now, this is super half-ass. Like, check it out, the nose is potentially kind of nice, but all the details just swamped under this heavy black paint, and the sides start to look a bit raggedy with these giant panel lines, dodgy gap and display-only wheels, and then about here it just stops being a train. And even though the front looks alright, this bit is essentially the source of all the problems in the other modes. But more than that, again, real talk, you just don't want Astro Train to be a bullet train, do ya? It's just a half-thought-out, half paint painted half a job bodge job with all the wrong ideas. Suppose at least it's got the rocket booster. That's something to cling to. But it would seem it's all a matter of how you spin it. Yes indeed, Hen K. Rollins here has managed to claw back a bit of self-esteem, mostly just by having prettier colours. I mean check him out in this pimpin' purpley pengness, with like new and improved windows and a slightly classier nose. It's not much, but it's working. Meanwhile, Shoki's serving right and realness in this rail racer worthy first class white and blue uniform. Blue uniform. Now this thing really has no business looking this much better. Like all it really does is keep that center line going a bit and pick out the wing windows. Windows. Plus you can apparently jam Daniel on the roof for a pantograph mode. What? I mean I love it, but what? 10 out of 10. So yes, Shoki just beats off all the others by paying a little more attention to the shaft. It's just a way smoother job and this whole bullet train thing just works so much better as a different character. So basically Shoki does the best job with this Astro Train by not being Astro Train. <laughs> Shuttle Transformation's basically an acrobatic about face with a joyful clickety clack soundtrack, culminating in a genuinely worrying snap from the tail fin. As a shuttle, then, this lad's pretty not bad. It's a sweet enough chubby little space plane with a chunky fuselage, massive sweeping underwings, and one adorable bulbous orca nose. Train bits are pretty egregious there, but he compensates with a couple of fun time features, like the gorgeously G1 rub sign, underside gun storage, gunderside, and you can even just about balance him on a Cybertron Jetfire for an ad hoc lo-fi proto NASA playset. Fantastro train. Meanwhile, Hank Hill here is still trading on that same thing but prettier shtick, which to be fair there's mileage in it. I guess he kind of plays off the train bits as like aerodynamic streamlining and that chrome ass booty boost to be popping, but Come on, change the record. So where does that leave old Shoki Tabuchi and his noble trainbot heritage? Like, as a character, he doesn't strictly need a third mode, but he has got one. So he kind of has to do something with it. So in a most unexpected move, he goes for an approximation of the Decepticon warship Thunder Arrow. Do you know what that is? You do? Oh, I do as well then. Plus he also introduces a bonus shoulder-mounted artillery mode. Shartillery. And upon closer inspection, turns out Daniel's cosplaying Micromaster Skystalker. So let me get this right. He's an Autobot Deluxe Class Quad Changer with two modes that are just pieces of equipment. And one of them's a Decepticon. Is that unprecedented? I think it might be unprecedented. Shove that up, your counterpunch. So following that triumphant classics resurgence, old Space Bus face went a bit quiet for a few years. I suppose there was that Collector's Club one that was all Astro and no train, check him out. But that aside, there was ample room for the unofficial rabble to rally a three-way third-party space race. Yes indeed, there's thus far been a tasteful triptych of attempts at a high-grade not Astro Train, or Astro Trained, and in an unusual turn for the normally repetitive and incestuous three-piece circle jerk, each one actually took a noticeably distinct take on the guy. Like there was that DX9 Chigger with his lumpen tallboy styles, which I hear is good, but I ain't got one. Just not quite my tempo. No bow tie, Chigger please. <laughs> So instead, what about this curious Cosmo carriage? It's Toy World Evila Star. Now first off, I must apologise to Ninja Cyborg who sent me this thing for a quick review about two and a half years ago, sorry. And I've always struggled to make a video about it because I just can't seem to get to grips with it. Because you see, Avila Star hails from a certain stratum of the whole third party phenomenon that just doesn't jive with me. Like the visuals are overdeveloped and yet still characterless. Transformation's frustratingly technical and panel heavy. Two guns for some reason? It's just exactly the kind of wrong headed fiddly ass rattle bag that's so far removed from what I like in a toy. Like the robot mode's so viscerally unsatisfying. It struggles to stand 
it feels wibbly and unreliable. And it even looks kind of boring and doesn't even scale that well with the rest of the NP Deceptor Brethren. Can I get anything out of this? As for the other modes, the transformation's such a faff. I've never been able to make it to the shuttle. That's bad, isn't it? I don't know if that says more about the too hard, try hard nature of the toy or just my stupid, clumsy, fat hands. But between the two of us, it's a bad time. Fortunately, though, it does come packaged in train mode, so you kind of can't miss it. And to be fair, it's an absolute stunner. Just a beautifully ominous, big, black, old school steam engine with insane detail and functioning coupling rods, even. Plus, if you pre order, they even did these hefty metal tracks for it. It's pretty good, right? And honestly, the box is amazing, and I do kind of love the name. Because apparently they were going to call it Devil Star, but I don't know if that was too generic, or too occult, or sounded too much like a Rob Zombie song. But there's something kind of seductively mysterious about the sound of Evila Star. It's kind of deliciously sinister and nebulous, and it implies a deeper, more cosmic terror than Astro Train does. Plus, if you read it backwards, it says, Rats Alive! But I just don't know if it's worth it. The transformation is pure misery. I just can't escape the fact that I don't like it. Toy World, baby, we can't force these things. You'll always have Grind Rod. Your jazz was shit too. Next up then is the unpretentious and amazingly monikered Transportation Captain from Fancy Cell. Well, fancy that. Now this is apparently on some level the work of beatdown alumni Machine Boy, but honestly I don't fully understand the situation and I don't really care. It's all smoke and mirrors, isn't it? Somebody made it and now I've got one. Case closed. The end. Bye. After a Vila Star, this thing is so much more my speed. With like a fun first philosophy and this appealingly uncomplicated aesthetic, this bouncy bloat boy is definitely blasting more of a chug vibe or even just a straight G1 upscale. And honestly, it's so much more in tune with what I like. Like it's irresistibly fun and doesn't reckon it's being clever. Just a big hefty help and a crowd pleasing space rock and I am vibing. His ability is not amazing. He seems to be lacking a few swivels here and there, but I don't reckon he super needs them. What he's got instead is a whole ass load of gear. Battle platform, multi-purpose missiles, fat wads of energon, little satellite mate, and this spot-on rifle zooka that you can jam in there for battle station bants. And even a spare toy accurate noodle with, dare I say it, light piping. So yes, Captain Astro here's definitely a good time geezer, but he's not exactly prestige quality. Like the plastic does feel a bit cheapo, and I'm not super enthused by these basic ass ball on a stick shoulder joints. But check this out. This this is me dealing with it. Only wanna see you turn into a purple train. Purple train, purple train. Transformation feels mighty familiar. It seriously seems like a straight G1 rip. I mean, it's not exactly, but like, look at this thing. How do you think it transforms? That's right. Results are shockingly similar as well. It's totally just a big version of this with these silly fondanty front flats with sculpted pseudo wheels and tiny trundly casters, which honestly at this scale comes off faintly ridiculous. Like, where's my money going here? But honestly, I'm enough of an Astro Train sycophant that I'm kind of into it. Yes, it's a facade, but it always was, wasn't it? I'm not here for realism. I'm here for a giant lavender steam engine with the biggest rocket boosters in the universe and for the first time ever, an actual god damn tender. Oh, look at that. I love it. Choo choo. Yes, mate. That weird little battle platform thing totally clamshells up into this little coal chamber. That is loco. So perfect, man. So lush. So fun. But not strictly necessarily good. Shift into shuttle modes, likewise a warts and all Gen 1 HD remake. And get a load of this meatloaf mobile. Come on, this is barely a shuttle. It's more like a shipping container with some wings on. Oh my god, it's adorable. Look at this. You gotta love how it kind of embraces the doofiness of the original. Like how the fuselage just stops and then there's a basically unrelated cockpit poking out. It's just a big dumb squish box and its payload is party. Smidge of accessory action in this mode, like you can blam the missiles on underneath. Look, he's trying to be 
hardcore. Oh, Or you can pop the cargo bay and have a good old waggle of the satellite of love. So extra. Fancy cell transportation, Captain, then, is in no way the slick, high-end masterpiece contender I was expecting, and thank God. It's a scrappy little love bundle with fistfuls of fun, and it's perfect for the discerning toy fan who enjoys a bit of kitsch. It's fun. This is fun. I'm having fun. Do you get it, toy world? But much as I'd love to cram the captain as the number one Astro Man in the unofficial Underground Railroad, it's never that easy, is it? Because between the slightly naff plastic and the fact that Fancy Cell imploded almost immediately after its release, there's only a handful left out there and prices are getting irresponsible. I mean, I paid 85 quid for it and I was delighted. Even so, I reckon this is the Astro Boy for me for life. He satisfies my appetite. Welcome to the family, fatty. <laughs> Ooh, still with me there? Give us a thumbs up if you're still with me there. Oh hey, check us out on Patreon. One dollar gets your name on the end, five dollars gets your early access to reviews. Pretty sweet. Or don't, you know, honestly, it's enough for me that you're watching. Thank you, I appreciate you. Anyway, back on planet Hasbro, things were looking a bit sparse for old Astro Train for a couple of years. Like, he wasn't in Animated or Prime or any of the movies. There was just like a Creo one and a Micron one and another classics repaint. And that was pretty much your lot right up until last year when Titan's Return fired onto the scene with this inglorious Bastro Train. Yes, indeed, Astro Train that long last gets a meaty official triple changing larger than standard action figure that can truly hang with the rest of the triple squad. Although he did have to wait until after Sentinel Prime had finished getting his sticky citrus fingers all over it. But check out this super hench ubermensch. It's just purebred Decepticon-y beef broth with like a jacked Zangiefy bod and sickening style. Yeah, Astro Train. <laughs> Oh, so terrible. So he's certainly a bulkier brute than those classics nerds. With his broad-shouldered bad attitude and these hunkalicious arms with, like, blotchy gun carbuncles. Carbuncles. Legs are pulling some serious mileage down there. Seriously, he's like 60% shins and at least 8% sweet brogues. Guns are looking on point, though, with, like, a cheeky Titan Master sit-and-shoot, along with a basic vaguely G1 handgun, which is a nice enough homage to the old Astro Blaster and the first of a cluster of gloriously gratuitous Astro eggs. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous the lengths it goes to to shout out the original toy. Well, check out the cheeky wing indents there, which serve absolutely no purpose other than saluting the old thing's foldy wings. I guess they had to change up the backpack a bit, which means tragically no boosters, so they gave it a bow tie. And like, a lot of the Titan Voyagers have got this silly shoulder pop thing, but you gotta believe it started with Astro Trade's silly lumpy shoulder wheels. Explode! Seeing as we're doing this, let's get the Takara Legends lad in on it. Does anyone else for Astro Train insist on using such wildly different regional colours? Can we not make a decision? But anyway, Japastro Train's once again looking smooth in his YouTube night mode dark theme with a couple of extra colour splats and a slightly sexier purple. But oddly, he actually feels a bit creakier. Like the ratchets feel kind of zestless and the knees are properly wobbly. Price of beauty, I suppose. Anyway, both of these Astro Creeps come with a cheeky electric headmaster. This one's a decently stern, golemy space face on the back of a standard titan man named Dark Moon, which I guess is either a movie reference or he used one of those embarrassing find your wolf name things that your mum keeps putting on Facebook. Meanwhile the Tocastro train head honcho is looking slightly spiffier with a painted face and everything, but he doesn't get a name for some reason so I'm gonna call him Extinction Revenge. So yeah, overall the robot mode's a fairly feisty kick Astro train. Now I'm gonna do you all a favour and shuttle the f*** up. Pretty much just stiffen him out and pop some panels to unlock this rather more Cybertron-y rocket man. Honestly, I'm not totally sure what this is going for. I mean, it's kind of like a traditional Earth shuttle, RIP, but sort of stylized, but not really. Like the shuttle shape's basically recognizable, but sort of rolling pinned out into a naan bread. And there's a few transformery touches here and there that I'm not totally sure if I'm into. Like there's just terabytes of detail on the go, which kind of implies this is some vast intergalactic space cruiser. Dig how tiny the bridge is, but then there's this massive secondary cockpit back here for one tiny guy. I mean, with Astro Train scales kind of out the window from the get-go, but what are we going for here? And pretty much all the details just deluged out by the flat-ass colours. And on top of that, it's just barely concealing the robot mode under there, looking super awkward with no idea what to do with his hands. Not that there's not fun to be had. Like Dark Moon Ebony Darkness Dementia back there is having a great time in his little plastic space tent. Or he can ride literally shotgun. And you gotta love the world's most pointless landing gear there, 
are holding it one millimeter off the ground. Over in Japan Town, then, things are looking a smidge slicker. I mean, it's still mostly just two colors slathered over about a billion crannies, but it's perhaps a little more balanced, and he's at least picked out the cockpit. But much as I try to dig the heavy wingspan and the squishy flat styles, this is definitely less NASA and more NAF off, and it also totally doesn't fit in with the others at all. Like Blitzwing's fighter jet and Octane's cargo plane both set a nice grounded precedent, and then Astro Train just blows it with this bizarre semi-sci-fi shtick. I don't know, man. Maybe it worked better in orange. But right here and now, it just looks kind of nasty. Nastro Train. So the train mode transformation, transformation, I must have already used that, I must have. Anyway, the transformation is basically a massively daft ultra split followed by a hasty cover up, resulting in this immensely silly scale shattering long boy. Again, I get that Astro Train doesn't really do scale, but... I mean, wow. For what it is, I do kinda dig it. It's kind of a whole new vision for the guy as a hulking Decepticon transport. Like an intense hybridization of a space station and a freight liner. Almost like some kind of astro train. So check it out. Either end of the paint train, you've got these bodacious blue collar freighter faces with plows more immense than the ones your mum takes nightly. But most of the other train bits just kind of flop around on these superficial skin flaps. Oh you, will you ever change? It's just such a frustration fest because all this detail's so enticing but so tiny. Plus it's swamped under this no effort paint job so you kind of have to go into macro mode to get anything out of it. And the actual wheels are just a joke. Up top then you've got this utterly absurd baby battle station where Obsidian, Dark Moon, Raven, McBovril can hang out surrounded by rifles and giant blades. It's just so brainlessly badass that I adore it in a Lego Blacktron kind of way. But I feel like it might have trouble with tunnels. Anyway, let's see how the Legends Legends getting on. It's obviously physically just as absurd but it's at least a slightly more palatable umami flavor. And the colors are kind of equally blanketed, but hey, looks like somebody's home. Still though, this whole thing's just such a curveball. I feel like it's gonna be a tough sell in any color. It is an interesting take on the old Starlight Express, and you can even flip the ends around for a cheeky Stormbringer concept art Easter egg mode. But I don't know, man. It's just weird to me that Blitzwing and the rest of the gang played it completely straight, and this thing is just so out there. What if, and it's a long shot, but what if this was actually intended to be Sentinel Prime, and Astro Train was the afterthought reaper? I mean, it kind of feels like it. So maybe Titan's Return didn't give us the be-all, end-all, ultimate Astro Train that nailed every mode perfectly. But for what it's worth, still a good fun triple changer. And if nothing else, the robot mode pretty much crushes. But honestly, I'm just happy to see the old Trainiac again. And that's the Lastro Train. So there's a few versions of this big bell end out there, each one fabulous but flawed in its own way. And I don't know if there'll ever be that one perfect Astro Train figure, but that's kind of not the point. Because Astro Train's not about pristine robot perfection. He's a doofy character character with a boring job and he'll take what he can get. And whenever the next one rolls into town, you can bet I'll be there on the platform with open arms and a bottle of scotch. So cheers for watching, thanks again to Ninja Cyborg, sorry for the wait, and thank you for 10 awesome years on the internet. It's been an absolute gas. Tro train. <laughs>